Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome back to the lecture on the hydrogen atom. Uh, in the last lecture, we left at the point of uh, the Schrodinger equation being written down using spherical polar coordinates for the hydrogen atom. In this brief segment, I shall tell you how the equation is separated into three component equations for the three variables that we proposed the radial coordinate, the theta coordinate of the angular part and the phi coordinate of the angular part as well. The phi coordinate solution will be identified immediately with the solutions of the particle in a ring and the theta coordinate will become the solutions earlier known uh, in mathematics literature as due to associated Legendre polynomials. The radial part will be identified with Laguerre polynomials and the hydrogen atom is a very good example of taking the mathematics to a slightly more rigorous level and showing that the analytic solutions for this particular real problem exists. Surprisingly, that is it. Beyond this point, all solutions become approximate. Okay. So, let us recap the equation. The overall equation is displayed here from the last uh, lecture. This was the last part of the last lecture. Now, you see that there is the radial derivative, then there is the angular derivative and the phi derivative. First, let me clarify a couple of uh, uh, notations here. When you write do by do r or square, dou by dou or psi or theta phi. What it means is a sum of two terms namely derivative with respect to r and derivative with respect to the first derivative. Therefore, you have r square dou square by dou r square psi the partial derivative of psi with respect to r and then the other term namely 2 or dou psi or theta phi by dou r. That is what is meant by writing in a compact notation like this. Okay. And second, when you write 1 by sin theta in a similar way, dou by dou theta of sin theta dou psi dou theta of or theta and phi. This again means two terms namely the sin theta derivative being a cot theta here because it is cos theta by sin theta. Then you have dou psi by dou theta plus sin theta cancels when you do not take the derivative it is dou square psi by dou theta square. So, one must keep in mind that this is what is meant by writing derivatives in bracket form. Okay. Now, given this particular form of psi or theta phi and given the form of the differential equation, our purpose was to solve this equation by separating the psi's into independent coordinate dependent functions namely writing psi theta phi function as the product of three functions, a function of radial part only, a function of theta coordinate only and a function of phi coordinate only. This separation is possible because of the particular form of the hydrogen atom equation namely that the potential energy is only dependent on the radial coordinates and therefore, if you look at this particular equation here the radial terms that you have here 
the radial forms this and uh, this and this will be separated out when you multiply the whole equation by r square you would see that these are the only terms which will depend on r and the other term will have the r square removed r square removed. So, they will depend on theta and phi therefore, you will have a differential equation in which uh, one part of the equation depends only on one coordinate the other part depends only on the other two coordinates and then you can immediately realize that these two independent quantities must be separately equal to a constant which will cancel each other. Therefore, it is possible to separate this equation into independent coordinates. So, let us multiply the differential equation by r, r square d by r square okay. and also divide the d by r of r theta of theta and phi of phi. When you do that the resulting equation for the radial part and the angular part take this form minus h bar square by 2 m d by d r of r square d r by d r and since we have divided everything by the wave function itself you will have 1 by r because the theta phi will be cancelled. Likewise you have 1 by sin theta sorry let me do the following sorry. Um, it is that and minus h bar square by 2 m is common to both. So, you have 1 by sin theta d by d theta of sin theta d theta by d theta and again this term will be divided by 1 by of this theta function. And then you have the last term for the kinetic energy 1 by sin square theta d squared phi by d phi square times 1 by phi. Okay, so, this will be the radial part angular part of the kinetic energy term and then the remaining namely minus z e square r because we have multiplied everything by r square by 4 pi epsilon naught and will not have any function here because that has been divided out and also what is uh, left over is the E r square is equal to 0. Okay. Yeah. So, this is the form after doing the separation, the division and then removing the, uh, the parts independently. So, what you have here or the radial part given by this term and these terms and everything else does not depend on radius the coordinate r, but depends only on the theta and phi. Therefore, it is straightforward for you to write this as equal to some constant c in which case the remaining term this and this will be equal to minus c so that the sum of this is 0. Okay. So, we have two equations one for the radial equation minus h bar square by 2 m d by d r r square d capital R by d small r divided by r plus. So, that is a kinetic energy term and then you have 
the potential energy contribution minus z e square or by 4 pi epsilon naught minus e r square minus c is equal to 0 because this whole thing is c and uh, if you write it in the standard form you can now get rid of this r and multiply everything by the r. So, you have the r here and see oh, this is the radial equation. and the angular equation will be whatever is left over namely minus h bar square by 2 m sin theta uh, 1 by sin theta sorry what did I write yes 1 by sin theta d by d theta. what you have here is sin theta d theta by d theta plus 1 by sin square theta ok. That is also 1 by capital of theta here 1 by sin square theta d square phi by d phi square multiplied by 1 by phi all of this is equal to minus c therefore, plus c is equal to 0 ok. Now, this equation again can be separated into theta dependent part only and phi dependent part only. If you multiply by sin square theta the whole equation you will get c sin square theta and then the first term will contain all the theta dependence term. The second one will not have the theta dependent form it will be only phi dependent part. Therefore, when you multiply this by sin square theta throughout and equate the term d square phi by d phi square times 1 by phi to some constant which by recognition of the particle in a ring problem we would equate that to a constant. Then the other term will depend on plus m square will be equal to plus m square. So, this is the phi dependent equation. And what you will have is for the theta dependent form or oh, there is also a minus h bar square by 2 m here ok. And then you have the theta dependent form which is minus h bar square by 2 m sin theta d by d theta of sin theta d theta by d theta and uh, if we do the algebra carefully it will be plus c sin square theta times theta <coughs> ok. So, that would be the c sin square theta minus m square theta is equal to 0. So, this would be the theta dependent equation and this would be the phi dependent equation. Okay. So, we are in a position to solve each one of them separately and uh, obtain the formal answer I mean the analytic solutions for these. Uh, three quantities. So, what you do is when you solve these equations which I will not describe here, when you solve this equation you will get a radial function, you will get an angular function and you will get a phi which is also a part of the angular function 
the product of the two together is known in not only hydrogen atom, but in general for such equations it is known as uh, spherical, the solutions are known as spherical harmonics. The radial function will contain what are known as the log a polynomials. Spherical harmonics are constructed using the phi functions and polynomials known as associated Legendre polynomials. All these things log a associated Legendre polynomial, Bessel functions, Hermite functions which we will see in the solution of the harmonic oscillator, Hermite function or Hermite polynomials. Then Chebyshev polynomial, there are many ways by which this Chebyshev is written. Chebyshev polynomials and so on, they all form a group of polynomials well known in mathematics as orthogonal polynomials. And these are important in the differential equation representation or a coordinate representation of the wave function in a suitable coordinate system and these polynomials are well known for more than 200 years. Schrodinger saw that his equation mapped into the differential equations that were already known and therefore he immediately put forward the solutions from those differential equations and obtained the conditions. Let me summarize uh, or let me conclude with the following statement that the radial function will depend on two coordinate, two quantum numbers n and l. The, the product of the two together will be called the spherical harmonics will depend on two quantum numbers l and m. The l will be the same for both the radial and angular function for a given energy and therefore the overall solution will be the product of the two and that is equal to psi with the three quantum numbers n, l, m or theta and phi. I am not going to describe how to obtain this radial and the angular parts, but in the next part of this lecture I shall describe the forms of the radial parts and the forms of the angular part and we will see some pictures for the angular parts which are popularly known as the representations of the atomic orbitals in uh, you would have seen them in textbooks both in the high school and in college textbooks with the p orbital having two lobes uh, in the z direction, in the x direction and the y direction and the d orbitals having some other representation. All these things are functional representations of the real and imaginary parts of the spherical harmonics on a spherical system, on a coordinate system given by spherical polar coordinates, the spherical surface. We will see some of that and that will give us a clear picture on what the solutions mean, not necessarily how to obtain them. That is part of the next uh, level of mathematics course or next level of physics or chemistry course that you might take. Uh, it is not part of this uh, series of lectures. You might find them elsewhere. We will continue with this in the next part. Until then, thank you.